Good morning. Welcome. Um, so, today I'm going to talk about SOS 24, not because it's a technical revolution, but just because it's very different uh, from any other major versions that we got in the past few years. It's a description, probably the biggest one in the Symphony world, um, but at the same time, uh, the good news is that upgrading the Symphony 4 is very easy, or at least it should be. The description comes from something very different, uh, and that's the adoption of new best practices and a new development workflow, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Just a quick recap of Symphony 4. Symphony 4 is exactly the same as Symphony 3.4 LTS, as far as teachers are concerned. But we removed all the duplicated features. We don't have a long-term support for Symphony 4.0. We removed PHP 5 support. And as I said before, we have a new development workflow via uh, something that is called Flex. So Flex is really a new philosophy um, how you can create a new uh, Symphony application. If I wanted to uh, resume uh, Flex in one sentence, it would be that one. It helps developers manage the life cycle of uh, project dependencies by automating boring tasks for any project, any size, any kind of project, any console application, any API web application, whatever, from very small ones to uh, the biggest ones. So Flex. Um, the first big difference between a project that you can create via um, the Symfony Standard Edition or the Symfony Installer and Flex is that we do not depend on Symfony slash Symfony anymore. And you will see in a minute that it makes a big difference in how you manage your application and your dependencies. By default, when you create a new project with Flex and Symfony 4, you don't have any third party uh, dependencies or bundles on the Symfony ones, and you will see not a lot of them, just a few of them. Uh, and then, based on this bare minimum, uh, you can add more dependencies when you need uh, to add more features to your uh, project. Being minimum also means that you don't need to remove anything. Uh, if you have ever created a project with Symfony Standard Edition, you know that at some point you need to remove things. You need to remove the default controller, you might have to remove some dependencies if you are not sending emails, for instance, you need to remove free, free speed level bundle, and things like that. That's not the case with Symfony 4 and Flex. Behind the scenes, Flex is a composer of the plugin. You will never interact directly with Flex, so the name Flex is not that important for uh, the users. It works for you behind the scenes. So when you are um, using Composer, Flex is there and is doing some things whenever you install or uninstall uh, a Composer dependency. It's based on recipes and we're going to talk about that in a minute. So, the first Symfony 4 change is actually how you get started when creating a new project. Instead of using the Symfony Standard Edition, downloading the package or using the Symfony Installer, you are now using the Composer um, binary directly uh, via the create project uh, at man. That's how you get started. And then you create a project with Symfony Scaletta, uh, which is uh, where we have uh, the very minimum structure for the project. Um, and that's it. So by the way, when I uh, created uh, the slides, I thought that the beta one for Symfony 4.1 would be released. That's not the case. So if you try that, it's not, it's not going to work, but hopefully we are going to release beta 1 on Monday next week. Okay, so actually we have two different skeletons. The first one is uh, the second one on the screen. It's great if you want to create a microservice application or a console application, something really small. And if you want to create a full stack uh, application like you would do with the Citizen Standard Edition, you can use the website skeleton, which installs almost everything that you get out of the box with the Symfony Standard Edition. So, it's, so that's two way of thinking about creating a new application. You can start with a minimal base and then add more dependencies, or you can get everything out of the box with this website skeleton, and then you can remove whatever you don't need. I recommend you to do the second one, if possible. If you are looking at the default skeleton, it's only one file, a composer, the JSON file, that's all, there is nothing more than that. And in there you can see the dependencies, um, well-known 
ones like the console, uh, Symphony Flex, of course, the framework bundle, which is really the glue between all the components that we have in Symphony, um, LTS, YAML, and .NET. So that's really the bare minimum that you need to get started. Okay, if you run the command, uh, Composer is going to do its things, downloading the skeleton, uh, installing all the dependencies that it is flex. Uh, but if you look at uh, the output, you will see something very different from a standard Composer installed man, and that's flex in action here. As you can see, flex did something with some of the dependencies. Um, that's because Flex can auto-configure any dependency that you install. Not just simply bundles, but any package uh, installed by composers. So it reads the associated recipe and does, it does things like uh, uh, enabling the bundle, creating a configuration file, adding things to the git ignore file, or adding some environment variables, things like that. It can do a lot of things. So it's not just for bundles, it's for any uh, uh, dependency that you can add on your, uh, in your composer. So we have one, for instance, on PHP unit. It's not related to Symfony, but we do have a recipe that integrates PHP unit into your Symfony application. Then you can see that it executes uh, some commands like clearing the cache, installing assets, and things like that. That's also something that is managed by uh, recipes and flex. So a flex recipe can contain some commands that you want to run whenever someone uh, runs composer install or composer update. And then recipes can also add some output at the end of the installation. So this one comes from the framework bundle uh, recipe to get you uh, to give you some hints about what to do next. Uh, so here it's about uh, trying project in the browser, it can be things that you need to do manually. Most of the time you don't need to do anything, but sometimes you have to, and things like that. So what we try to achieve with Flex is giving you the exact same experience that you have with the Symfony installer without having anything uh, uh, that is tied to Symfony. So just using uh, the regular composer uh, command. If you want to learn more about the recipes, uh, we have two different repositories for recipes. The first one is the official one. Uh, official meaning that uh, those recipes are created by the system core team, so you can't add any uh, package there, it should be um, validated by the core team. Um, the second one is the contrib repository where all the contributions can be accepted without any, um, not without any validation, actually, we validate uh, that everything is correct, uh, but we don't reject any contribution there. We have almost 200 recipes right now, um, which means that all the main bundles and all the main packages are now covered by uh, Symfony 4 uh, or Flex recipes. So if you're looking at what the Composer Create project did, you can see um, here the recipe for framework bundle. So that's just one example of what you can do with a recipe. The first one is a bundle section where you can enable a bundle. So enabling bundle is done automatically with Flex. Then we can copy files from the recipe. Uh, we can add composer uh, commands. We can add environment variables and .env uh, file, and then also managing the git ignore file. That's just a small example. We have more than that, but you get the idea. So that's a description of what Composer and Flex should do whenever we install the framework bundle um, dependency. We also have a new file, symphony.log, that actually uh, reference all the dependencies for which we have a recipe, uh, which means that this file should be in your Git repository with the commit file, because whenever you run Composer install, uh, Flex checks that uh, a recipe for a uh, package is already installed. If that's the case, it does nothing. If that's not the case, then it does uh, its work. Okay, now if you look at uh, the directory where we installed and where we created actually uh, a project, you can see that there is more than just the composer of JSON file that where it was um, in the Citizens Collector repository, and that's because Flex actually did something. So you can see that back default we have only 30 files 
which is out the number of files that you would get uh, from using the Symfony Standard Edition. And if you look at uh, the total number of files, including the vendor directory, you can see that there is a reduction of almost 70%, which is, I don't know if that's nice, but at least the surface is uh, less, which is always, uh, at least the perceived complexity is less than before. Okay. Um, here you can see that the directory structure is a bit different from Symfony 3 or Symfony 2 with a public directory instead of web. Uh, we have the source directory, we're going to talk about this one uh, a bit later on. We have the var directory, Symfony.log, the config directory with a bunch of files. So basically now, instead of having one config file for all the packages, we have one file per package. That makes sense because those files are managed by Flex uh, now. So whenever you install a package, Flex can create a new file for configuring this package. And when you remove the package, it is able also to remove the file. So you don't need to have uh, to do something like that. Um, OK, talking about environment variables. So I'm not sure no, it's not there, but we also have a dot .env. Uh, file there to manage uh, environment variables. This one is very important. So first, you must know that the dot and the environment variables, they do not replace the parameters.yml file. The parameters.yml file still exists and you still need to use it for things when, when it makes sense. So basically, uh, environment variables are only useful when there is something that is different from a development environment and a production environment, like um, a database password, for instance, or something like that. But you should not use environment variables to configure your project. That would not make sense. You should use parameters of general uh, for that. One nice side effect of using environment variables is that we can simplify things. So as you probably noticed here, in the public directory, we only have one front controller, index.php. We don't, we don't have two of them, like we had before. And that's possible because now we have uh, the app and, and app debug environment variables, which means that we don't need to have different app kernel um, calls here with different values, which means that we can have one front controller, which is really nice. And the side effect is that it also simplifies running commands uh, on your console because, again, you don't need to pass any variables like the environment or the debug flag. You can just use the console, and depending on your environment, depending on whether you are in production or um, in development, it, it, it's going to be the, the environment variables. So it's going to know if you need the debug mode, if you are in production or not. That's nice. So to sum up the new directory structure, we have less depth. It's, I think, much easier to navigate um, the new directory structure. Non-PHP files are now in their own directory, so if you want to create templates, we have templates as a directory. Uh, we have assets and uh, more than that. And then all those directories are totally decoupled from CT, right? So public templates assets. Decouple from things. Even the source directory is different now because uh, it's bundleless. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Which means that everything you put in those directories are really just about your business logic and not about Symfony anymore. Okay, so Symfony 4 is more lightweight uh, by default. Uh, if you have looked at the number of dependencies that you get uh, when, when using the Symfony skeleton, um, Template, you can see that we have 21 dependencies versus 88 with the Symfony Standard Edition. 88 being uh, after expanding the Symfony slash Symfony uh, package. Or if you want to have a look at uh, that visually, you can see the 88 uh, dependencies. Actually, we don't have the 88 ones because you have a doctrine that's 11 dependencies and we have only one box. Uh, just, you know, because it, would not fit on the screen. And with Symfony 4, uh, that's much better. One new library flex, and then you only add the core components that you need to get started. So you don't need uh, the form component or translation or validation or whatever. And this one has a great consequence on 
how you actually manage those dependencies. If you, so if you are using Symfony Standard Edition, the form component is there by default from the Symfony Symfony package, which means that if you don't use form, you need to actually disable it, or you can disable it in uh, uh, the configuration. That's your decision, you should do it. With Symfony 4, that's very different. By default, the form component is not there, which means that it's not enabled by default. And if you want to use the form framework, then you are going to require the form component with Composer, and Flex is going to detect that and enable the form framework by default. Which means that Symfony 4 is doing the right thing by default. You don't need to think about that. If form is not there, it's not enabled. You have full performance, full speed. If you install, if you require the form uh, framework, then it's enabled by default. That's, I think, very nice. Everything is automated. Talking about also uh, not having to remove anything by hand. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but with the Simply Sound Edition, we have a default controller. And the first thing you would do when creating a new project is removing your default controller because you don't want it. That's not the case anymore with Simply 4. This page is actually bundled directly into the HTTP kernel component. We detect if you have some routes uh, configured. If that's not the case, we give you this nice uh, welcome page. If you do have some routes in your configuration, then bam, it disappears. You don't need to do anything. There is no uh, manual cleanup uh, to do anything. Okay, so. Just because we have less dependencies also means that we have less commands by default. If you are running in console, you can see that we have uh, 30 commands versus uh, 57 with the simple standard edition. So we are talking about uh, the main ones, the core ones, and whenever you are going to add more dependencies, you will, you will add more, of course. So, now that we have this empty shell, I would say, um, we want to do something uh, more useful, creating an LOL page, for instance. So the first thing you can do, you can uh, git init, which is not needed anymore because it's done automatically. Uh, you can add all the files. Remember, we are managing the ignore file for you, and then delete. That's the files you will get in your first uh, commit. So. Instead of, so let's, let's try to replace the on page with a custom controller and template. Instead of doing it by hand, I'm going to use a new bundle, which is the maker bundle. Um, it's almost a replacement for the generic bundle that we had before. There is a slight difference between the two bundles. The generic bundle was really about creating trust. Whereas uh, the maker bundle is more about generating files and configuration, and most of the time single files. And that's also possible uh, because of Symfony 4 and, and some of the features. Um, you might have spot that we are using require maker and not Symfony slash maker dash bundle. That's an alias. Aliases are something new in Symfony 4, managed by Flex as well. Um, and those aliases are actually shortcuts for common packages. So you can say require a log, bad, php unit, or any symphony component. You never need to add symphony slash something. You can say require workflow, CSS selector, HTTP kernel, whatever. So it's, it's quicker. And then it also reflects some opinionated choices by the core team, which means that if you say require any API, or a mail, you get a choice. If you say manner, you're going to get Swift mail. If you require ORM, then you're going to get doctrine by default. And people are asking all the time for the core team to make choices, so I think that's nice. It doesn't mean that you can't install something else, but if you want to use the aliases, you would get um, the choices made in the core team. Those aliases are only possible in the main recipes um, repository. Okay. Some of those aliases actually refer to what we call paths. And a path is something new in Flex as well. 
it bundles several dependencies together uh, that uh, made a package, uh, uh, a composer made a package. And as you can see here, that the debug pack, uh, and if you install the debug pack, then you get the debug bundle, the monologue bundle, the profile pack, PHP bridge, and some other ones. That's very really nice because remember, by default, you get nothing but the framework bundle, which means that whenever you want to work on something new, if you need uh, to debug something, if you need logs, if you want to profile it, you need to require the dependency by hand. So those shortcuts and those paths helps you get started fast. There is one limitation in the pad, and the limitation comes from the fact that when you require debug, the simply debug pack is going to be in your required section of composer or JSON, which means that if you want to tweak the dependencies, that's not possible. So we have an unpack command, and the unpack command expands uh, the pack to uh, its dependencies. So as you can see here, if I unpack the debug pack, then you get all the dependencies and then you can move some of them if you want, some of the dependencies. If you want to learn more about uh, aliases and packs, you can uh, go to the new symphony.sh website where all the recipes are actually um, referenced and you can search for aliases and, and packs and things like that. And then you can click on any of them to get the recipe and to better understand how it works uh, behind the scenes. Okay, so now let's use uh, the make a bundle to create uh, a new uh, controller. So first we install that in the development environment. If you diff uh, the project, you can see that automatically Flex registered the make a bundle for uh, the development environment only. And if you have a look at all the commands that you get uh, by default, uh, you can create almost everything, a form class, a test class, uh, even subscriber, a tweak extension, a unit test, a voter, and a crud for doctrine as well. So, a bunch of things uh, for your productivity. Let's create a controller, and if you try that, you will get an exception, an error, saying that to do that, you need the annotation um, dependency. That's actually not a dependency, that's a path as well. And this error is very important because we are trying to help you installing the right dependencies when you need them, not before, just when you need them. So you want to create a controller. We made a choice to actually use annotations for uh, controllers. You need the annotation dependencies. We are we are telling you that you need to have dependencies. So we can do that, and then. Uh, it's going to install a bunch of uh, dependencies, as you can see here. And then, we can uh, create a default controller. So it's going to create just one file under the source directory, controller, default controller.php, that's all. No configuration, nothing, just one file. And if you have a look at the, at the file, you can see that uh, the namespace is app controller, which means that we don't have bundles anymore. Uh, for your source directory. I'm not saying that bundles are dead, I'm just saying that for your code, we are not using bundles anymore, of course. Uh, the bundles are still useful for things that you install from the community. So, app controller, that's your code. Here, we are extending the controller class from Symphony Framework Bundle, but that's totally optional, of course. Then we have the run annotation and the JSON build. That's just an example. That's what you get with the Mega Bundle. There is no configuration because in Symfony 4, with Flex and the default configuration, uh, controllers are automatically registered as services, like commands. So if you create a command, you just create the file, it's registered by default. Okay. Uh, so, now I want to create a template. Again, for the template I want to use Twig, so what I can do here is I can require Twig, uh, and here is the change I've made to the controller itself. That's very natural. Again, nothing to change, no configuration changes, nothing. 
just said, okay, in my controller, I want the Twig environment uh, service. I don't care how it's created. I don't care how it's configured. I want to use Twig. So you inject Twig and you use Twig. That's all. And of course, you need to create a template under the template directory. Very straightforward. Which means that most of the time, you don't need uh, to define your services again in a configuration file. You create your file and everything works out of the box. Just because of this configuration, there is, there is no magic. If you don't want things to be done automatically, you can just remove the auto-configure uh, setting or setting it to false done. That's really uh, straightforward again and very simple to understand. Okay. Let's uh, have another example. I want to use a Twig extension. I want to create a Twig extension. That's the kind of question that I would have to ask me before being able to do that. The first one is, where do I need to store this Twig extension? What is the best practice? Is it a Twig, repo a twig directory? Do I need to create a Twig slash extension directory? That's not you know, that is easy to uh, answer. The second one is, which interface or which abstract class do I need to extend to create this Twig extension? Which file do I need to change to register my Twig extension? And then, if you are using YAML as a configuration format, then how to actually use a tag or define a tag in a YAML file? I'm sure almost nobody here know. You were late. <laughs> <laughs> I have five minutes, extra minutes. <laughs> uh, how do you generate a tag in YAML? So at some point, you would, it, it would be better, or at least faster, to do things the wrong way, doing things directly in your controller instead of using a extension. With Symfony 4 and Flex, that's very easy. You use make to extension, you have one file, it's registered automatically, you only have to care about your business logic. That's all. And the full automation works for a lot of things, Twig extensions, even listeners, document repositories, commands, lawyers, and all. Now, if you want to go beyond uh, other world, and I won't be able to do that today, <laughs> it would be an extra 30 minutes. We don't have that. So, if you want to define a model via doctrine, adding an API, managing data via uh, an engine generator or something like that, the only thing you have to do is require or an API. That's it. really easy. As a nice uh, bonus, if you are using Flex, uh, installing all the dependencies are much faster than using a uh, regular composer. And that's because we are, uh, you know, uh, that, that's very important because we are adding more dependencies than before. It's not just about symphony, symphony, it's about symphony slash a lot of things. And we may faster, and if you have a slow connection, then you'll see a big difference. So, a quick recap, uh, symphony 4 with Flex is all about auto configuration for any composer package. We have this new mega bundle that simplifies things a lot. Um, we don't have boilerplate code anymore, just business logic, that's all. If you look at Ruby for a bundle now, it is just about composer requires something done. Before, it was a lot of different steps, how to enable the bundle, how to create a default configuration and things like that. Uh, controllers and commands are services now. You can go from very small applications with just one controller, an API, or a microservice or something like that, to very big applications and full stack framework style applications. Um, and meta packages and packs do a lot of things by default. I then talked about things like dependency injection, uh, but you can dig in the documentation. With, we have a lot of things about that. If you haven't tried the API platform, I recommend you to do so because it's very advanced and very nice. Uh, simply and core with Webpack, uh, that's nice as well. If you want to upgrade to Twig, uh, to, Twig to Symfony 4, that's also kind of easy, I would say. So the first thing you need to do is to remove the Symfony slash system dependency that you have in your composer.json file, replacing that with the exact set of uh, 
pencil that you use in your project, and then you can use the composer of fixed recipes command to actually generate all the files for them. That works pretty well because the directories are different between system 3 and system 4, so you can have a new configuration in the new directory structure and still have the old one, so the transition is made easier. Like that. And I think that's all for today. Uh, if you want to learn more about CT4, ctd.com slash 4. We also have a bunch of uh, blog posts about CT4 and Flex, and of course, documentation is up to date. Thank you.